Ever since tools like SSAS came out, vendors and business leaders have been trying to get rid of data engineers. And our prior counterparts and prior iterations, you know, DBAs, ETL developers, data architects. Sure, not everyone explicitly says it, right? Like a, a business leader is not going to come out and say it. A vendor might not come out and say it, although I've seen some of their marketing where they basically say, hey, we don't need data engineers, you just need us. And they've been doing this for decades at this point. In fact, I was just talking to a data architect who sadly lost her job because an EVP came in and decided to say, hey, we're just going to give everyone access to tools and everyone's going to do their own data engineering. Like what could go wrong there? To some extent, I totally get it, right? Like it makes sense when it comes down to it. We data engineers tend to slow people down, whether you're a software engineer trying to make a change to your code and we're saying, hey, wait, you know, we have to change our pipelines or a data scientist who's trying to get access to data. And we're like, okay, let's build a data pipeline. You know, we slow it all down. We are just the wrench in the gears of a business putting out data driven decisions. So sure, from that perspective, I totally get it. I totally get why people want to say goodbye to data engineers. I get why it makes sense. Like, why not just give people access directly to the data, let them build whatever they want the let's remove data engineering strategy yeah let's just put it into play and let's go if you're currently facing that at your company or are facing some leader who's just hell bent on making everything ai i want to really take a look at what happens because this has happened before and the truth is it rarely ends well so i want to take a look at what's happened and kind of the trends that occur here and how you can better hopefully explain to your leadership why data engineers are important so first, I just want to point out the fact that, you know, this is not new. You know, the first time I ran into this kind of like up and down of, of you know, let's get our data engineers, let's bring them back. This oscillation between those two thoughts uh, was with data lakes, right? The idea that, hey, we could just put data all in one place uh, and then let the data scientists figure it out. And in many ways, that's what created uh, data engineers because a lot of these data scientists had to suddenly spend a lot of time building data pipelines and things of that nature. And so that was kind of this weird oscillation. We had, you know, hey, let's just get rid of trying to build a data warehouse. Let's build a data lake. And they did that. They figured out that was hard and it got messy. So then they kind of came back and they're like, oh man, you know, data scientists aren't spending time building us models and, and ML. So let's bring in data engineers to clean up what they've built, you know, clean up all their Python notebooks that they've built. And great, we have data engineers again. And then we just kind of keep having this pendulum swing back and forth, right? The example I love giving on this is from Airbnb. So here's a segment from their article where it says, you know, for several years, Airbnb did not have an official data engineer role. Most data engineering work was done by data scientists and software engineers who were recruited under a variety of different monikers. So yeah, they just said, hey, data scientists, software engineers, just build what you need. That's faster, it's so much easier. And then they started running into problems. They ran into governance problems, they ran into ownership problems, they ran into pipelines not landing at the right time. They just kept running into quality issues and so they eventually were like, okay, wait, 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 we need to pause. We need to have a whole talk and a whole strategy kind of section and whole investment focused on data engineering. We need to like double down here with basically, if you read this whole article, kind of the notion of this article, like we need to refocus all of this because we've created chaos. We've created spaghetti code everywhere. You know, no one wants to own it. So let's bring in some data engineers to slow things down a little bit. And you know, I've seen it at other companies as well, right? Like I've seen it when I've come in as a consultant where they've let anyone build data pipelines. And so suddenly you have to kind of bring it all back in and you're like, okay, well, we've got thousands and thousands of queries written everywhere. We have thousands of lines of queries written everywhere. Nowadays, I just had someone show me their ChatGPT SQL and it was terrifying. It's not always better to go faster. And in fact, you know, you might be like, well, at the very least you have these people's queries and they've built things so you can kind of see what they're going. You still often have to start from scratch because what they've written either makes no sense or only kind of gives you a general gist of what they were trying to do and you have to re-develop uh, all of it. The truth is trying to build all of this like data science and even analytics on some sort of unstructured data swamp with just, you know, a spaghetti code of Python and SQL and all of these, you know, tagged on automated low code tools is very much like building a house with no foundation, right? If you gave developers an option, if you gave them the option to just build a house with the bare minimum of foundation, whatever that would be, right? Like just a few planks of wood versus concrete. Guess what? They would. They 100% would just build it to the bare minimum. And that's how you get houses falling over it and giants apartment complex or condo buildings sinking in the ground in SF. People will always do the bare minimum when it comes to the foundational work. And that's kind of exactly what some of these VPs that I've been hearing about kind of want to do. They, they hear about the fact that, hey, we could do a lot of this work without data engineers. And then I look great, right? Like I've saved the company probably millions of dollars if it's a large company with 
10 data engineers, easily $2 million. And more than likely, I'll get a promotion or be in a different company by the time all of this starts to sink and fall apart. I'll have sold this story about how much money I've saved. I'm now, you know, someone in the C-suite because I've sold this story. And then you perpetuate the same issues. So yes, in many ways, if, if people could, data engineering would go away. Like, I'm just being honest, right? We tend to slow things down. We tend to do more in terms of like all these extra steps to ensure that data is reliable. In fact, my wife, who's a data scientist, saw a system design that I put together the other day. And she was like, wow, it feels like there's a lot of redundant steps you take or you're doing a lot of checking. I was making sure to do things so that I could backfill later on and all these other extra steps. And it does. It feels like a lot of extra steps, but all of that ensures that in the future, what I'm building continues to exist. I'm not trying to build a one-off dashboard or analysis. I am trying to build something, uh, what I view as data infra or like a data kind of core layer that shouldn't hopefully change too much, right? And when things change is easy to adapt. I'm not just trying to do a quick ad hoc thing. I want to build something that has foundation, that is reliable. Again, I really view this as like almost the data infra layer where it's something that everyone else relies on. So in turn, it can't change often and it has to have systems in place to ensure things don't break. You know, a lot of people call that something like a data warehouse or a data lake house, whatever it is, it needs to be built in such a way that one, yes, it can change where required, but two, it's reliable, it's robust, you can backfill it, you can handle all of the various ways that things could go wrong, right? If data gets injected into it or inserted into it, that's bad, you can go back and easily fix it as well as get, you know, some sort of heads up that it was inserted in there. You need to think about that. It's not just about output and putting out lots of pipelines. It's about being able to maintain it. So how do we actually kind of solve the issues, right? Like again, how do we try to work better with the business? How do we try to find a good balance? One, I would say it's important to define the line of ownership. Some data teams I've worked for really try to like lock down the data warehouse, give people no access to it, like limit you down. I mean, obviously you need the security aspect, but like you can't build anything on top of it. You have to go through these proper channels. And here's the reality. That's how you get shadow data teams. That's how you get people building things around you, right? Like if people run into a rock, they'll just build around it. And so you kind of have to accept that, yeah, people are going to come to you and you're going to have to figure out ways to work with them to get them what they need, whether that means giving them some access to data so they can build their own things that they need, while also ensuring that they're not building some sort of end use case that then poses some massive risk to the company, right? So there is some balance there, but you have to realize you're not going to win in a game of saying no, right? If you say no, they will figure out a way, they will buy a tool. You kind of have to figure out how to work with that and you want to be informed at the very least that they're going to buy a tool and be a shadow data team. Like, how can we work with you to make sure that what you're building is either just for ad hoc use cases or if it starts becoming more crucial to the business, you know, that we kind of try to bring it back in onto the data infra layer because now everyone's using that. Another thing I think is it's important to iterate and show progress, right? If you are in a step where you're just starting to build up the data warehouse, if you take 12 months, people are going to start to get frustrated. People are going to start to get worried that you're not doing the things that they're hoping you're going to do. And so you have to kind of iterate, show progress, bring the business teams and whoever your stakeholders are along with you on the journey. Make sure that they feel like they're part of the project. Show them what you're doing. Show them how they can start using things. You know, if you can build out some tables early on, do it. Like build out a few tables so that they can see it. They can write some queries. They can feel comfortable that, hey, things are progressing forward. Don't take, you know, a year to do that. Because if you do that, people get nervous. People start looking for ways out highlight your wins, right? Like as you are delivering, if something that you built is reliable, is delivering uh, something to a data scientist, show that, right? Don't just quietly hide behind your computer. I know that's something I say that is a benefit for data engineers. If you want to make sure that you don't get drowned out by everyone else, it's important to highlight your wins. Also highlight the consequences of not trying to take some of the proper precautions. I'm not saying become the stick in the mud that stops every project right? You have to learn to give and take to some degree, but do make sure it's clear that it's like, hey, if we go down this path and if we, instead of building this the right way, here are all the risks, right? We can, you can bring up the article from Airbnb. You can talk about maybe some prior things you've seen in your past. Just make sure it's clear to the business that, hey, it's maybe not a great idea for us just to build things without trying to make them reliable and robust and reusable. The truth is the push to move faster will never go away. People always want more. Oddly enough, you know, if you look at most companies, especially large ones, they have thousands of dashboards and maybe 10 or 20% of them are used, right? So clearly developing dashboards and developing certain things at a reasonable pace maybe isn't the problem. 
building the right thing, building the right things well and reliably is hard. And so if you don't want to be in a company that's just building things for the sake of building things and then throws them away, it's good to bring that up and bring that up to your managers, bring that up to your directors and say, hey, we could do this fast, but really we already have 500 dashboards. You know, what do we do wrong with those that these are not right? Was it because we built it too fast and so no one uses it because it didn't really meet anyone's use cases? Is it because the data is unreliable and now we have to go back and kind of rework it? The more you can kind of let people see that like, hey, there are reasons why we're trying to maybe slow down the process in a way, but in the long run, create a system that lets you move faster. That can help people kind of understand what we're trying to do as data engineers and why. Sure, you might think it's a good idea to say goodbye to us data engineers. It saves a lot of money. But in the, in the long run, it is not uh, a solution. With it, guys, I want to say thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks all. Goodbye.